Eosinophilic esophagitis is a relatively new descri newly described disease. It was reported at really 15 to 20 years ago. It is an allergic disorder that affects not the outside, but the inside, so the food pipe or the esophagus, and that's really where this inflammation is limited to. We consider it something that is clinical, meaning the patient has symptoms that brings them to the doctor. And also, when you actually look at the tissue or the affected area under the microscope, you see inflammation there. So the combination of the two things combine to create this disorder. It is called eosinophilic esophagitis because an eosinophil is the type of white blood cell that causes the inflammation in the tissue. It is that cell that is looked at under the microscope and counted to see the extent of the inflammation in the area. Eosinophilic esophagitis is also called EOE for short, for an abbreviation. EOE is diagnosed based on the symptoms that bring the patient into the office, and in different age groups, there are different symptoms. So it can be an infant who's not feeding well, to a child who's vomiting, or even an adolescent who has heartburn-type symptoms. And when they come for evaluation, other disorders are investigated as well, but ruled out. So perhaps you thought they might have reflux, and they were treated for reflux disease, but didn't get better. Um, perhaps something in their history suggested this, so they were having some difficulty swallowing, or when they felt that they would eat, they would feel something would get stuck and they would have to drink to let it down. That suspicion leads you to perform an endoscopy. And the endoscopy, uh, an endoscopist, which is a gastroenterologist, would look with a fiber optic camera into the gastrointestinal tract and examine all of those areas and uh, sample pieces of tissue with a biopsy to look at under the microscope for the presence of these cells. The way we treat EOE here at the CADC involves a large multidisciplinary team approach. You have the medical providers, the gastroenterologists, the allergists, in addition to a nutritionist to help guide and make sure that the patient um, receives all the nutrient that they need for growth and development. These are children that we're considering. Uh, we may need the aid of a social worker to help um, establish regulations or things in the school that the child may need if they have to stay away from certain allergens beyond special diets. Um, I also work with, in the CADC, uh, speech and language pathologists. Some infants and young children have feeding problems that they need to have addressed. And lastly, we also employ what's called a patient navigator. And a patient navigator is exactly what it sounds like, someone to help the patient navigate the system. You know, we write prescriptions, we make appointments, but it can be very overwhelming for a parent caring for a child with a chronic illness, and this navigator can help facilitate those appointments and make sure that all the needs of the families are getting met.